Okay, now as it pertains to cutting the box or finger joints on the mirror box, my setup is pretty straightforward. I use a sled that I have built custom for making box joints. We have a movable stop here. As you can see, this is a half inch piece of uh, square steel, half inches squared. And that's actually going to serve as my stop whenever I'm making the finger joints. Now, whenever I do my test, when I initially set up and I do my test to make sure that the finger joints are fitting, I'll need to see if they're loose or they're tight or they're perfect. And I'll be able to control their tightness or looseness by loosening my block back here and sliding this this way away from the blade to make them a tighter fit and then this way toward the blade to make a looser fit. And I always test on scrap before I go ahead and start cutting the finger joints for the mirror box. Now the way I get the height for my Datto blade, this is just a, uh, it's a Ocheland Datto blade. And I set it for half inch and I typically put a, uh, like a 64th inch spacer in there just to get a little bit more play around the uh, square steel here. But whenever I'm setting up my, my height, I'll just use the stock that I'm going to cut the finger joints on and I'll make sure that it's just about a, I like about an eighth of an inch over actually, which is more than what most people do, but I'm going to flush trim it with a router bit whenever I'm finished. So I actually will make that about an eighth of an inch higher than the half inch stock. And so that is my setup. I'll go ahead and record the way I test with some scrap and then we'll get started making the finger joints. All right, so I'm set up. I have my Datto blade, the correct height, and I'll be able to test that anyway on my scrap. But I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna grab a couple pieces that are the same thickness as the uh, mirror box that I'm cutting. And I'm gonna go ahead and test them and make sure that my, uh, my, my fit is correct. Now I just cut a, a few fingers, you don't need much, because I just want to find out real quick, whenever I put these in, is there a lot of pressure required or can I just kind of pop them in no problem? Now I like to be able to do it whenever I'm doing plywood, this is different with solid wood, but whenever I'm using plywood, which I use for all my telescopes, um, majority of my telescopes, I want to make sure that it's actually a nice smooth fit. I don't want to have to push too much at all. Reason being is I use um, Type Bond 3 whenever I'm actually gluing up the joints themselves. Now the reason I use Type Bond 3 is it has a longer open time. You can apply the glue on all the finger joints, glue up, and you still have a few minutes that you can move everything around and make sure it's nice and square. What happens is as that glue starts to set and as it starts to get tacky, it takes up more and more room on these finger joints. And when we're dealing with stock that is, you know, 16 inches high, that's quite a few finger joints on every side. So if I have to sit here and beat on it with a hammer and push and push and push, I don't want too much resistance whenever I'm trying to get everything set because by the time I try to get everything square, that glue isn't going to be holding like it should and it's not going to set properly. So. That's the reason I like to make sure that on scrap that I can just slide those finger joints in nice and easy. I don't want to have to push really, really hard or even tap with a hammer. Now when I'm doing solid wood, it's a little bit different, but, uh, but that's how I do it whenever I'm doing plywood. So we'll go ahead and start cutting this. Um, one thing I will point out is you're going to notice I'm going to use a piece of quarter inch stock as a backer for whenever I'm cutting my finger joints here because that's going to minimize my tear out on the back of the joint as it's going through the uh, Datto blade. A lot of times you'll get blowout or tear out on the back part of the wood and to avoid that or minimize that I'll just take a little piece of stock and just put it behind here and that'll create the initial Datto on the stock 
and that'll keep me from having to blow up. And I'll watch carefully. If, if I still start having some tear out, what I'll do is I'll take and I'll, I'll take a sharp edge and I'll scribe a nice long line across here and that will help further eliminate that tear out. I typically don't go to that extent unless I'm getting quite a bit of tear out. So, we'll get started. Okay, so this is going to be my backer. Make sure I have a relatively clean workspace here. All right, that fits in there nicely. Safety glasses. We'll get started. Okay, so the finger joints have now been cut for the back of the mirror box. Now what I'm going to do to precisely cut the mating joints on the side of the mirror box is I'm going to take the back of the mirror box, I'm going to slide this first recess right over my stop, my half inch stop. I'll take one of the side pieces, I'll butt it up to that. Hold on to it there. Pull that guy off. And now I'll go ahead and cut my first joint. And that will be a nice flush fit with the uh, first joint on the back. Check our fit. It's nice and snug. These will be our box joints. So I'll go ahead and do the other side and the front by myself. And then we will cut the uh, sides to mate up with the shorter profile of the front. So we'll cut a little angle on each side, cut off a few of the fingers. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the front of the mirror box and both sides, and I've taken the inside pieces, so these are gonna basically fold up like so, and I've kind of connected them to where they're kind of open like a book. So what I'm doing here is I am going to make my mark that I'm going to uh, cut off my material to make the sides of the mirror box even with the front. And once again, this is so that whenever that mirror box is sitting in the rocker box, as it tilts down vertically, whenever it goes up and down vertically, it can clear the bottom of the uh, rocker box without ever hitting or uh, coming into contact, so you stop. So that's what I'm going to do here, and I'm just taking a simple speed square. I'm going to put it like so. I'm going to run it up to that third finger. I'll take my pencil, make my mark,
And now I'll go do it on the uh, other side here. Then I will take both these pieces to the bandsaw. I'll cut that off and then I'll sand them nice and flush. And at that point, we are going to be ready to glue up our mirror box. Okay, so like I said before, we'll take both sides now. And where we made that mark, I'm going to go ahead and just make a simple cut on the bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, using a jigsaw will work just as well, so you could do that. there we have it. Now everything will go together nice and I believe we're ready to glue up. So that's what we're going to do next is the glue up operation.